very beginning, so uh, you can understand me well. First, uh, uh, thank you very much for the local uh, organized community, uh, community actually provide this opportunity to, to give a talk. And also, although I cannot see all the audience, I just uh, uh, thank all of you. So this is actually a time difference. Perhaps in your place, even in my place, is early morning. So my talk will be a uh, uh, testing gravitational theory with a broken world symmetry by gravitational waves and black hole observations. Uh, I will divide my talk simply uh, to three actual parts. Uh, first, consider Einstein's Easter theory, then uh, consider some of the original tests. So finally, just quickly summarize the result. So Einstein's Easter theory you will see is a theory that I can bring to rolling symmetries. Uh, it's actually a tensor, vector tensor theory. Uh, normally, we know in general relativity, the gravity is described by actually uh, only the metric G mu nu. But here we introduce a vector field, which is also called the Easter field. Uh, so actually, uh, like what I said, this is a tens vector tensor theory. So there is actually uh, the vector field actually is called Easter field. This is always a timeline. So that's why in this theory we will say because it's always a time like, then we actually this Easter field define one preferred direction. So which actually uh, will let the Lorentz symmetry locally. Because of this uh, well lesson actually, you will say instead of only one species of graviton spin two, in Einstein theory here we have actually spin two spin zero and spin one. So we have three different species of uh, gravitons. Uh, this actually the action looks like a complicated. Uh, the vector field you can see now we, instead of uh, uh, the only G mu nu, here we have a formal carbon constant we call C1, C2, C3, C4. They are all dimension, no, a dimension less. I know uh, uh, three parameters. Of course, one, uh, those uh, four parameters uh, are zero, so they do the theory reduced to uh, Einstein's uh, general relativity, which I always call GR. So uh, uh, when we actually value the action with respect to the metric and the Easter field, the vector field, we can get this actual equations. Like what I said, we have actually three different modes. So each of them actually uh, move in principle with a different velocity. So CS means the uh, spin zero mode squares. CV is the vector mode speed squares and the CT is the tensor mode. So they just define in terms of the four common constant, C1, C2, C3, C4. There's some combination from them, C1, 2, 3, which means uh, equals C1 plus C2, C3, etc. So this is actually uh, the theory, the very remarkable uh, purpose of this theory, like what I just said, although the breaking and rolling is symmetry, but it's still several consistent, and all of the consistencies with all observations uh, we, we did actually so far. So this is also, it's a Cauchy problem is world very imposed or very posed. So this actually, as far as I know, there are only a few theories possess this property. And also, this actual theory possess all the gravitational radiation channels, scalar, vector, and tensor, as just mentioned. So this is actually interesting in several aspects. So now I'm going to actually uh, talk about the observational test. First, we need the theory to be self-consistent, which means this uh, has to free of ghost. Free ghost means the kinetic term. If we make a perturbation, you will have a scalar mode, vector mode, tensor mode. The kinetic term of a scalar mode and the kinetic term of a tensor mode, the same kinetic term of a vector mode this coefficient has to be positive, otherwise the theory is sick. So you will see there are three actual coefficients we call QS, VT, 
SVT stands for scale vector tensor. So they must be actually, all of them are uh, greater than zero. The same thing for the uh, the gradient instability. So the velocities of this actually through species has to be a, a square of the velocity has to be positive. So this actually second requirement. The third one we know uh, if the uh, any of them actually the speed of any of them less than one, we have a gravity Chernikov radiation. So we do not want this happen. So we require each of the species actually greater than or at least equal the speed of light. Then we also have actually the big bang nuclear sensitivity requirement. Because in this server you will see the effective Newtonian constant, which we call G Cosmo, is different from Einstein case, which depends on carbon constant C1, C3, and C2. So this is actually uh, one requirement. Another one is we know the uh, the gravitational wave 170817 actually tell us the tensile modes, the speed of actually the tensile modes are almost equal the speed of light. So this is a constraint. Also, we require a theory has to be consistent with the other solar system, uh, solar system observations because here we have actually the ether field, then there's actually a dragging effect, which actually makes the post-Newtonian constant. Two of them are different from an Iceland case. We call alpha one, alpha two. So this actually has to be, each of them, alpha one has to be less than 10 to minus four, alpha two, 10 to minus seven. So this is all the constraints so far we actually uh, observe. So if you put them together, you will find this actually there three, uh, four constraints. One is the same one, source opposite, so the world has to be less than 10 to minus 15, and the same one four has to be positive, less than about 10 to minus five. Then C2 also has uh, to be greater than C14, less than 0 0.095, which this co comes from a nuclear sensing uh, uh, requirement. Same time, C4 has to be less than zero or equal zero. So this anchor the constraints from uh, all the observations we got so far. Now I'm going to move on to study the uh, black holes and all the quasi normal mode. Why we know? Because uh, uh, in the last stage of uh, uh, the, the one binary, so once they actually merge into a, a final object, normally this is a black hole. So the gravitational wave emitted in this uh, phase can be superposition of the quasi normal mode. That's why quasi normal mode is important right now. Uh, of course, now to study the quasi normal mode, actually, we need first to find solutions. So far, all the solutions found are spherical symmetry. But unfortunately, all the solutions found so far actually they have been ruled out by current observations, which means they are outside of the uh, the phase after actually we consider all the observations. So what we did actually is we we'll first find a circular solution, then actually uh, make a, a linear perturbations. So to find a solution, analytical solution is very uh, challenging. What do we do actually to try to find a numerical solution uh, with a spherical symmetry? So we use actually, uh, uh, go, uh, we use this actually Finkelstein uh, uh, coordinates. The reason why we use this is because we need to actually penetrate to the actually uh, measure horizon, which is the human horizon normally we see. So, uh, the problem become complicated, uh, but I just mathematically, the most important uh, difference is that there's a two there are two horizons here in in this theory with a spherical symmetry. First is spin zero, because remember we have like a spin zero, spin one, spin two, but the spin one, spin two uh, mode will not appear with a spherical symmetry. Uh, only spin zero appears. 
spin zero, uh, the, the speed of uh, spin zero grow to actually larger than speed of light. So this actually spin zero particle define the horizon, which is should be the inner boundary of black hole, instead of the measure horizon. The measure horizon defined the, by the speed of light. Because the spin zero greater than actually has a velocity which is greater than speed, uh, the, the, velocity, the speed of light, so spin zero horizon actually defined the inner boundary. Now the, the mathematical challenge, challenge is the metric is a single and a metric horizon, which is a normally we call event horizon. So we have to actually uh, numerically solve this problem. What we do actually, we use actually shooting measure. First, uh, from spin zero to the measure horizon, then from measure horizon to infinity. So we just then match them together. So once this actually is done, we find various solutions with the spherical symmetry. You can see now the solution has different properties depend on the speed of the spin zero uh, gravitons. So first one, for example, first case, CS squared is almost equal one. Then we go to CS squared is equal 1.4 something. So we just go on with the different speeds of spin zero gravitons, so we, we get actually different uh, solutions. But all those solutions actually they certify the observational constraints. We get actually many solutions, and uh, then we find, uh, we calculate the different actual physical quantities, for example, the uh, so-called, the, uh, the, the angle, uh, the, what's it called, the, the, the metro horizon RG, and also the uh, mostly internal uh, stable uh, photons. So we will find actually there is no significant difference from actually Einstein theory, which in certain sense good means this actual theory actually survived from observation. Then actually we move on to actually study the linear perturbations of the black hole solution, uh, the quasi normal mode. So after that, actually, we consider other parity perturbation. We know actually the linear perturbation can be actually uh, uh, divided into odd or even parity perturbations. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Oh, yes. can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, if you have any question, please stop me, actually. Uh, Otherwise, okay. I should go on. Yeah. So this actually, we just consider other perturbation. Then we find actually, before we uh, calculate the quasi normal mode, we find that the other perturbation actually is stable. We have to actually set another parameter, which is C4 equals zero. So this actually, in uh, certain sense, surprise, we didn't uh, predict actually this is uh, the case just because of stability. Now actually we're studying the quasi normal mode. Like what I said, the challenge is because the inner boundary actually is, uh, 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 the inner boundary actually inside of the event horizon. So we have to actually put actually from, a event, uh, from a inner boundary to event horizon then to infinity. So we're still working on the quasi normal mode, but the stability analysis already tell us C4 has to be zero. Uh, this work is still going on. We also did some work to study actually uh, the gravitational radiation in the East Barrier phase. For example, when we have actually two uh, compact uh, uh, astrophysical objects like a black hole, black holes, we consider the gravitational waves. So before we consider actually binary system, actually we first uh, calculated the gravitational wave emitted by uh, many body systems using post-neutronian theory. This already has been done by a couple of people, but we just actually re-derived their result, then correct some actually uh, typos. There's some mistakes actually. So in this theory, you can see there are 14 actually independent components, like uh, in Einstein case, which is a decompose this uh, uh, 
uh, 14 composed into scalar mode, vector mode, and tensor mode. I will not actually uh, go to so details about the technical part. Just say from this actually scalar mode, vector mode, tensor mode, we can construct the gauge environment. Then you will see actually the total time because of total 14, but we have four gauge freedom. So we just actually 14 minus four, we have 10 uh, independent uh, perturbations. Once we get this actually, we impose certain gauge condition. Then we just actually calculate the uh, perturbations. We use phi IG for the tensor mode, psi I, the vector mode, then actually phi two actually, this is the scalar mode. So once we get this actually, we get all the mode, then we can consider the effect of uh, this actually original wave when pass uh, uh, through actually the detector. Then this actor will be given by so-called geodesic deviation. So this just actually calculated the geodesic deviation. You can see we project this actor perturbations into a total of six different modes. So normally we see H cross, H plus, H cross, and H B, H L, H X, H Y. I will explain later uh, what it means. So H B actually is called scalar polarization. H also scalar polarization, but uh, along the propagation direction of gravitational wave. H X, H Y. So due to the vector modes. Of course, you can see in Einstein theory, we have only the first two, H plus, H cross. But in Einstein Easter theory, we have all the six modes. So they are all of, all of them are different from zero. The only uh, difference is the two scalar modes actually, they are not independent. They are actually linearly connected. So that's why we have actually Total of five independent modes, two for spin two gravitation, two for spin one, and uh, uh, one actually for spin uh, zero. So, so here actually, uh, so it'll be one, six modes, but uh, only five independent. <clears throat> so after that, we consider the, uh, the, the emission of a power spec. Actually, the, the, you can see this is actually the, the power actually emitted the power. Uh, there's actually three terms, A, B, C. So A, B, C, they are function of the four uh, parameter C, I. The A term actually contains all the contributions from the sixth mode, means the uh, scalar vector tensor. In Einstein theory, only A term difference from uh, zero equal one, actually. B equals zero, C equals zero. B actually, uh, is due to actually the uh, monopole, C actually due to dipole. So of course in monopole dipole uh, radiation in Einstein theory is zero, so we have only quadrupole radiation. But in Easter theory, all of them are different from a zero. So what we do actually, once we have a general perturbation, general actual form for embodied problem, we apply our formula to actually triple system and a binary system. First, like, we consider the first uh, relativistic triple system, which was observed in 2014. This is uh, still the only one uh, relativistic uh, triple system. We know actually we observe many actual triple system, but uh, there must always a small. So this actually is the only relativistic triple system we observe so far. So there's actually three uh, compact uh, uh, object. The first one is a neutral star with a mass of 1.44 solar mass. The second actual one is 0 0.2 uh, uh, solar mass, which is a water drop. So this actual two binaries, they form a inner actual orbit with a period of 1.6. And the third one is uh, also water drop, the mass is 0 0.41 which actually form the third one, another actually uh, uh, circle, so with a period of about one year, 327 days actually. So this actually the two planes of the binaries are almost equal. 
So after that, actually, we use the observational data to calculate the effect, the emissions of uh, due to quadrupole, monopole, and dipole. What we found from this figure, you can see there's uh, several lines. There's A, B, C. A is the blue line, C is the, uh, the green line, B is the actual red. You see the B part is very small. The, the amplitude is 10 to 7, but uh, the a, uh, the blue and green line, they are almost uh, the same. The Like what I said, the blue line is A, which represents the quadruple. In Einstein's server, we have only quadruple radiation. But in uh, Einstein's user server, the dipole also almost the same amplitude. So this tells us if we have a triple system, then one through the observation of dipole and quadrupole, we can actually distinguish Einstein theory from Einstein ether. So since in Einstein theory, actually, there are no dipole radiation. So uh, actually, uh, now we do find a candidate for the triple system, which is uh, GW 190814. So people propose this actually due to triple system evolution. Uh, so this is actually our application to the triple system, but we have not observed any gravitational waves from a triple system except this is a candidate. So now we move on to the actually gravitational wave emitted by binary systems because we already observed uh, uh, about 90 gravitational waves, all of them from binary system. So what do we do actually? We calculate the amplitude of this actually is six mode. Like what I said, uh, the, the HB always is proportional to HR, but we find the vector mode is extremely uh, low because of the constraints from C minus R from a gravitational wave. So we just plot this four mode. You can see here actually we have uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, theta, the angle theta, one is actually the, the delta line is Einstein ether, the southern line is actually uh, Einstein zero. So actually from this figure, you can see more clearly with the, the actual frequency. The frequency you can see actually, if we can really observe the frequency of binaries like space detectors, so we can actually also distinguish actually Einstein ether theory the reason why, because you see the frequency in Einstein ether theory is much higher than Einstein theory. Because here we have like two additional radiation channels, uh, the monopole and the dipole, or the spin zero grid and the spin one grid. In Einstein theory, we have only one channel for radiation, which is the spin two. So you can also see the difference of amplitude a plus and a cross. So which means actually, if we do like what we expect, the gravitational wave can be observed. Yeah, hello? Yeah. And we finish in a few minutes. Okay, yeah, I will be finished actually uh, within five minutes, okay? So this shows how, what's the difference of a gravitational wave uh, before they are merged in the inspiral phase. As we expect, the space like, the space like, uh, basic detectors were observed such gravitational waves. So we actually think this is a very promising direction we can test uh, Einstein ether theory. Of course, we also calculated the phase difference and the amplitude difference, amplitude difference of gravitational waves. So this actually looks langley because actually uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, effect. So we just actually show you once we get uh, this actually difference uh, effect, we can compare the theory with observations. So we just uh, calculate all the PPE parameters. So it's ready to really uh, uh, fit with observations once we observe a uh, gross waves emitted from its very face. So uh, yeah, this actually, uh, I'll quickly summarize the result. So we uh, numerically first find uh, spherical black hole solutions. 
which are the only ones that certify all the current observation conditions, then uh, from the considerations of strong federal regime, like GW 170817, we find the C13 is a light, almost a zero. Actually, it has to be less than 10 to minus 15. So uh, when we consider stability of this black hole, so we find C4 has to be zero. So then you can see the four-dimensional phase space now reduced uh, two-dimensional. We also actually uh, generalize the uh, PPE formula because so far the PPE formula only certifies the, the um, without spin zero, spin two modes. So we have to generalize this, then get the phase space and also amplitude. So once we observe such a gravitational wave, we can fit a theory with the observation. So we also apply our general theory to the three body system. We found a, actually the dipole, uh, uh, is a, the effect of a dipole is important. So using this kind of gravitational wave, we can also further constrain the theory. So I just quickly uh, uh, auto look. Now we just calculated the, uh, the post Newtonian approximation, the PPEs to the first order. We needed to go to second order in order to actually to use this to test the theory. We also needed to figure out the right now, the Cosmo mode, which we are working on. Of course, now so far the gross and we are all spherical symmetry. We also needed to consider no spherical symmetric gross waves. So once we understand this, actually, you can see we can easily generate to other series with a broken Rowan symmetry. So I will stop here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. For